204 Ground Control. Welcome to my microphone madness video. That's right, man. We're going to dive into uh, what I use as in pro studio gear. And um, we're also going to dive into, <laughs> um, of course, the Aesthetic uh, company. Okay. So this is Microphone Madness. And uh, this is just a small portion of the ground control station. Okay, now, me personally, I run an MXL 990, okay? Now, I got my whole station kind of dismembered here, okay? I got uh, an oscilloscope coming in. I need to completely install this. This is a tablet oscilloscope. This is for... Um, Reviewing your modulation on the fly as you broadcast, okay, to make sure you're staying within the correct harmonic level, all right? I got to get that, uh, which is um, RG316. We got to get that ran and routed and cleaned up. Um. But yeah, okay, usually we're on uh, President. This is actually my backup radio. Never mind the dust, guys, Okay. President Lincoln 2 Plus, that's just the backup radio. Here, this is uh, my um, my 2 meter VHF uh, heads up display, okay? And here's the mic for that. And it's wired and routed to the module right there. I gotta get that cleaned up as well. Uh, but here are my two main talking radios, the Striker 955 and the Striker 655. Okay, and that's my key box, and uh, yeah, a very important piece of equipment that I really like. Okay, now, although this is the heart, old school Turner, that's ready for restore. Great mics, anyways. Um, now, this is the heart, this is the heart of the station. Okay, your radios, and my digital effects and audio processor is the brains, okay? That's the brains right there, man. Now, I know what a lot of you guys are saying. Ground control, you're not direct injecting, you're losing all types of sound quality and this and this and that. Well, <laughs> my dispute against that is go scroll down my channel and find... Um, a tribute transmission titled video and you can hear my audio and it's spot on it can't get much better than that okay so do i want to go with motor mouth mod uh modulator yes i've i've talked to mr john bartel and um and i've done this in messenger he's very helpful and uh pretty much informative and um I also let him know that he is inspiration to us all, you know, and especially me. And, and the guy is not one of those type of guys like, oh, you know, I only want me to sound like that. This guy, Motor Mouth Mall, uh, he loves, he loves, <laughs> he loves the wide band audio, man. And he would love nothing more to have more and more people actually sound that way cleaning up the airwaves okay it's not just what you transmit it's also what you receive man do i want to hear a bunch of you know mumble jumbo distorted audio no of course not man so if everybody hopped on the bandwagon within the next 10 years and you hear more and more wideband audio man that's a plus dude that is a plus um and and that's that's how Motor Mouth Mall is, you know. He just doesn't want it for himself, you know. He would love to hear more and more stations in his receive that are broadcasting wideband audio, and I agree with them. Um, but without further ado, you know, um, we're gonna pull these down real quick. All right. This is my little mini mic museum. Okay, these all three are MXL 990s, but they're different versions. Okay, and we're going to dibble and dab into the MXL company, all right, the Mogami 
XLR cable company, which is one of the best XLR cables you can get, is by Mogami. And we're also going to dive in to a little history on the aesthetics. So, without further ado, if you like microphones, if you like a little bit of history, okay, please stay tuned. We're going to get this off the shelf. Okay, we're going to sit it down on the test bench. We're going to pull the case off and we're going to review these mics. All right. Hold on to something. We'll be back. And we're back, guys. Okay. So as you know, here you have your original Golden Eagle D104 mic head. Okay. Here's your original chrome based D104 mic head. I have the neck and base stands for both of them, but they're packed away and in storage. And the two heads are on display with the uh, with my other three mics. Okay. And the reason why I chose D104 is because they're very infamous. They're infamous microphone. I mean, since the 30s, man. The 30s. <laughs> I believe the company was founded in 1933, man. Um, and they were popular with uh, radio broadcasters, sports broadcasters, you know, uh, and, and things of that nature. And then eventually ham radio operators that soon bled into CB radio operators. OK, now, depending on the generation in the year is depending on what type of mic element is used in the D104. OK, and actually, depending on the quality of the make. All right. Um, for about 10 years and then when they closed up shop, yeah, aesthetics, uh, <laughs> aesthetics quality has went down to garbage. Uh, unfortunately, it's just the nature of the beast, man. You know, um, you know, they put, starting to put, uh, plastic, uh, key, key slides and key buttons down in their necks and their base. And eventually the plastic would run, uh, 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 would run off and, and, and smooth itself off. So now when you go to key it, it's not even catching the, the slide bar and, you know, just a pain in the ass. Uh, <clears throat> but anyways, let's get into, um, Mogami and MXL real quick. Okay. And then we'll come back to the D104s, all right? Because I know a lot of you guys have uh, plenty of information on the D104s, even the history of it, all right? So without further ado, the MXL 990, okay? I've showed you the original one. There you go. That's the gray. That's the, uh, the base, the standard MXL 990, okay? Very, very affordable, all right? And that's one of the reasons why... Um, in recording and broadcasting, the MXL 990 has been so infamous. It's because it's a high quality microphone, but yet it's affordable. All right. Now, the reason why I have these threes on display is because uh, they're just more of an exclusive model. OK. This one here is, it is called Midnight, the MXL 990 Midnight has a gorgeous I don't know, midnight purple to it, okay, with, uh, this is actually what they call black chrome, this isn't chrome chrome, that's what they call black chrome, guess I'm gonna have to polish these things up after I get done the video, <laughs> um, and, uh, you get your case like this, this is what the, uh, midnight comes in, okay, 990 midnight, all right, and also you see uh, the Mogami label there. Mic internally wired with Mogami. We're going to talk about Mogami too. Uh, they've been a high quality XR uh, XLR cable producer for a long time. Okay. And it's actually some of the best uh, XLR cables that you can buy out on the market today. All right. And yet again, it's affordable. You know, it's not going to break your pocket. Um, but see the blackout version. All black, black on black on black. You can kind of get in there and peer into the mic head. All right. Now, <clears throat> my blackout version actually came with a hard case. Uh, and so did the original gray MXL 990. Came with a hard case, okay? 
uh, which is really cool. If you're running around, you know, uh, music recording studios and, you know, and stuff like that. And, you know, so they give you a nice case, a nice shock mount. And they do apply that cheap stage mic stand type fucking <laughs> mount there. Yeah, you don't want to use those. Always stick with a shock mount, okay? Um, but yeah, that's what the Blackout in the original MXL 990 came with, okay? Now, my MXL 990 Patriot. One gorgeous microphone. That did come in a box as well, okay? All right. Now, the reason why I really like this mic, and I bought all three of them because they're, they're just exclusive models, okay? And, and I wanted to, dis to display them, just like with these two microphones, even though I've had these for a long time. Um, but... You have a built-in, okay, a built-in negative 10 dB pad, okay, which is really cool, like really cool, dude. Another one, you have a built-in switch, okay, for your 150 hertz low cut. That's freaking cool, man. I swear it's just uh, cool to the bone, man. So, inevitably, cosmetic-wise, this is why I have these three on display. And also, they're badass mics. They are FET preamp with balanced output, okay? And if you're trying to do wideband audio, okay, balanced output microphone, balanced XLR cables, okay? Balance, man. Balance. And you can Google the reasons why. Balance is better than unbalanced, okay? And uh, uh, a lot of it is RFI, shielding, okay? The other stuff we're not going to get into about balance and unbalanced line because that'd be a 20-minute video, all right? So we're just going <laughs> to, we're going to move on. But as in um, MXL Microphones is uh, a professional audio division of Marshall Electronics, okay, which was a private-owned company specializing in uh, industrial and consumer electronics. Um, it was founded back in 1980 by Leonard Marshall, who owns and operates the company still to this day. Shout-outs to Leonard. Um, he's always had a keen interest in microphones and and the driving force behind that. And so he established MXL Microphones. Uh, Leonard Marshall, he was an electrical engineer in the early 1980s. Uh, he was introduced to audio and video cables made by a company based in Japan known as Mogami. Okay. Um, the audio cable was developed by Mogami's chief scientist in a Japanese university to show how many material structure excuse me, to show how much material structure can improve sound. Um, that's when Leonard Marshall brought samples back to the U.S. and the clean, transparent sound quickly became the industry standard in professional recording studios today. Damn. Uh, 1985, uh, Marshall began manufacturing cable assemblies with Mogami cable and high-quality connectors. Uh, today, Marshall Electronics is the leading Mogami distributor, and that's globally. <laughs> not even, not even nationally. That's they, they just globally. <laughs> um, the the first um, MXL branded microphone was launched, man, back in 1998. So they, you know, like I say, they've been in the game both Mogami leaders and uh, Marshall Electronics leaders for a long time. Um, in 1998, it was introduced as a microphone for music recording, uh, broadcasting, and uh, also instrument recording too. And uh, it was the MXL 2001, okay, 1998. 
Then they followed up with an MXO 2003 and 1999. Um, so, basically, when you got two guys, innovative guys, and they understand the world of sound, it's, it's just beautiful that people come together like that and bust out affordable, high-quality products, man. It's really cool. And like I say, you just can't beat it. You just can't beat it. You can't beat them for the price. And I know a lot of guys out there, they're using cheap condenser mics, uh, you know, like the BM-800. And let me tell you one thing. Yeah, you switch out from that BM-800 to uh, MXL-990, and you're going to be like, wow. Yeah, instead of paying like 30 bucks for a condenser mic, yeah, I'm definitely going to pay that 150 120 whatever the case may be. Um, but yeah, now we're going to skip over to the D104, man. All right, we're going to flip her around real quick so you can get a, a good view of her. She's in great shape, okay? Of course, she's got some scratches on her and, and stuff like that. Um, but yeah. Now, <clears throat> the Astatic Corporation um, is a commercial audio products manufacturer that was founded in 1933. Astatic formed CAD professional microphones in 1998, which is basically like a division of Astatic. Okay. Um, the company reorganized as Omnitronics uh, in 2000 and later combined Omnitronics with CAD um, under the CAD audio. So basically now, uh, where, um, where a static corporation came from, okay, uh, is basically CAD Audio now, okay? Even the website is cadaudio.com. That's C A D. Uh, Charlie Alpha Delta Audio dot com. OK, Charlie Alpha Delta Audio dot com. So basically, as static, what they're called today is CAD. All right. Um, back in 1932, amateur radio operators by the name of Creed M. Chorpinen um, and F.H. Woodworth. OK, began experimenting with different types of microphones for their ham stations. Their mutual friend uh, named Charles Simple worked for um brush development company where he, where he had been experimenting with rochelle salt crystals <laughs> uh, mr charles simple demonstrated some crystal pickups that brush was working with leading to uh chorpening and wordworth to find the aesthetic microphone laboratory incorporated and then came to market the company's model d104 crystal microphone as well as, you know, a lot of other crystal microphones. And um, they also supplied um, uh, crystal cartridges as well as hydrophone. And uh, they also created, um, not excuse me, not created, but manufactured sonar devices for the military in World War II. So there's some, some badass history here, man. Um, but after World War II, a static microphone laboratory became the Estatic Corporation. Oh, they don't they don't come later to form CAD and and wipe out the whole Estatic business until like the year 2000. So it's way later when Estatic and Omnitronics become CAD. Um So uh let's see here. In 2012 the Citizens Band production division of Estatic that had been acquired by Omnitronics by Bargen LLC in 2006 was sold to DAS Companies, a communications product distributor for internet truck stops. <laughs> for the internet and truck stops. All right, my bad. <laughs> um, they also, uh, Daz expanded the ecstatic name to non-microphone accessories, including coaxial cables, meters, and antennas. And there you go. That's one of the main shifts and reasons why Astatic went from high quality to BS quality. Okay. Um, so. <sighs> the D104 microphone introduced in 1933. 
The iStatic D104 became known for its high frequency response that contributed to better communications audio quality. Early D104 mics used a one inch thick case, a large ID tag, and holes for a ring and spring mounts. The design was modified in April of 1937 with smaller tags and reduced thickness. A black grip switch stand, which was which is the G stand, um, with a metal ID tag and was manufactured in January of 1938. Now, a solid state amplifier was incorporated into the G stand in the 1960s. The U.S. Bicentennial model D104 was manufactured in 1976, featuring an eagle <laughs> and a shield design on the back plate, as well as a chrome base. There was also a gold in color version with the eagle on the back plate. There were also many other variations, but production ceased in 2001. The D104 is often used by CB radio hobbyists and vintage amateur radio enthusiasts as part of their operating activities. So it's really cool to see something go from professional broadcasting, you know, like uh, 1930s and 40s baseball, like they broadcasted it live over the radio. So it's really cool. Or maybe, you know, you walk into an old old school lounge and somebody's singing there and singing the blues and, you know, what's in front of them is an old school D-104, you know. It's really cool to see something transition from one genre or one field and trickle down to another. It's it, it, That's really cool, man. It, it is. Um, we all know the original D-104 is very sought after by people. Okay, um, they're beautiful microphones. Uh, you know, they, they, they really have that noir uh, vintage feel to it, man. Um, I don't use them anymore, but I've used them all through my CB life, man. All through my CB life. You know, uh, it, it's, just a, it's just always been there. Always been there, man. No matter if you were in the hobby uh, uh, overseas or in the States, man, the D-104 has been there. <laughs> Well, guys, that about wraps it up, man. And um, I know I did a lot of Roger John, and I know this is in CB radios, and I know it's not amplifiers. I know it's not, uh, you know, uh, service videos and, and stuff like that. But uh, this channel is going to be for the radio heads. You know, it's going to be for people who, uh, you know... Um, who are into microphones um you know uh, like 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 dan hopkins man y'all check out his youtube channel the man loves test equipment you know and his pride and joy is his test equipment and what they do and how they perform and what their job is and how to use them correctly man so um you know shout outs and big ups to all the people in the hobby, you know, you just don't have to be an amplifier addict or, you know, uh, a radio addict or a collector or whatever the case may be, man. So um, anybody out there who who um, who has a microphone addiction or let's say, uh, you know, uh, who has taken a liking to microphones in the history, um, please, man, comment below. Uh, let's rap about it. Let's talk about it, man. Uh, like I say, uh Anybody who's trying to dive into, you know, uh, wideband audio, uh, maybe they don't have the cash up front. Maybe they don't know. They don't have the know how up front. Uh, you can check out my other videos on the V7 equalizer, the V6 equalizer. And those two videos are going to show you um, an easier way to get as close to direct inject as you can, you know, without having to spend the money, the time and the products, you know, because remember, you got to have the radio. And then you got to have the radio set up for wideband and direct inject and um, and stuff like that. But, yeah, I mean, uh, like I say, come on by. Let's talk about it. If you enjoyed the video, hey, man, show me some love. No doubt about it. It's going to be 204 ground control. Microphone madness. Black Ops technology. 73, 73s, 73rd.